From 1981 to 2013, despite the total suicide rate decreasing year on year, the proportion of UK male suicides to female steadily increased from men making up 63% of suicides in 1981 to 78% in 2013. In 2005, suicide was, narrowly, the second leading cause of death in men aged 15 to 34 in England and Wales, second only to road traffic accidents. Male to female suicide rates worldwide show a similar skew. Now, there are two possible explanations for this. Either men, as a group, are in some way suffering from some kind of psychological condition or defect that not only makes them depressed, anxious and suicidal, but which has also been getting worse since 1981, or men are in some way suffering from some kind of societal condition or defect that not only makes them depressed, anxious and suicidal, but which has also been getting worse since 1981. If only there was some data that could be used to dismiss or support this crazy theory, right? Well, luckily enough, there is, if you know where to look. Here's an example. A letter published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health is where you'll find the first one. A.J. Kupsawa obtained and used data from the U.S. National Longitudinal Mortality Study, NLMS, from the period 1979 to 1989. The interesting thing here is that the analysis was restricted to divorced and separated people, specifically non-Hispanic white men and women. Some might find the results surprising. After the results of the study were age-adjusted, taking into account the differing suicide risk of different age groups, male and female, it was found that divorced men were over eight times more likely to commit suicide than divorced women. After taking into account additional factors other than age that have been shown to contribute to suicide, the shocking conclusion is that divorced men were nearly 9.7 times more likely to kill themselves than comparable divorced women. Or, for every divorced woman that committed suicide, over 9 divorced men killed themselves. Even compared to the average suicide ratio amongst the entire population, in the US this is currently 4 male suicides to every female suicide, this is notable. It actually makes a sick sort of sense, if we're being honest. Men are routinely treated badly by the family courts regarding access to and custody of their children following separation and divorce. They are routinely hit with heavy and, in some cases, downright unreasonable alimony costs following divorce. They are routinely forced to pay child support for a child they might not have wanted or to father or are unable to support financially due to their means, and in some cases jailed due to an inability to pay those debts, even when they were clearly unable to. They routinely have measures used against them to unjustly claim resources from them, even when just a common law marriage is involved. And now, following this list of serious injustices and the frankly terrifying increase in risk of suicide to men following the end of a relationship, we are being asked to accept that men take their own lives more because of mental issues or because they fail to seek help. Articles on the subject routinely tell men what they need to do, with the key seeming to be asking for help. So how did this work out for Hayden Burton, who hung himself in jail, where he was placed after protesting for the right to see his child? Or for people like Robin Williams, forced to work jobs they didn't enjoy to pay the expenses of others who were no longer part of their lives. Divorce is expensive, he said recently. I used to joke they were going to call it all the money, but they changed it to alimony. It's ripping your heart out through your wallet. It's not just about divorce, though. I see this kind of thing routinely in society. Men are obviously denied rights because they're men. This denial causes them depression. They kill themselves, and then society asks why males keep killing themselves. Homelessness. Prison. Rape culture culture. The demonization of men and even male genital mutilation and a lack of protection against it for the most vulnerable in society. I mean, it's proven and noted that those who suffered trauma as newborn babies are more likely to commit suicide later in life. And yet nobody has thought to do research into and check the impact that MGM inflicted on a weeks old baby boy might have. Some of the most sensitive skin on the body cut away without anaesthetic at a time when the victim is so sensitive that their warm bath water should be checked by an adult's elbow or wrist, simply to simulate the baby's sensitivity to pain. Is this not even an area where we should be looking if we're at all curious or concerned about male suicide? 
I wonder what it will take before, as a society, we actually start listening to men when they do ask for help. Then we might realise that male suicide isn't actually a problem. It's a symptom of some of the massive injustice levelled against ordinary men throughout the world.